Welcome to French Press Sunday. I'm very excited because we have a guest uh, today joining us for Pour Over 101. Let's do it for French Press Sunday. We're ruining the name as usual and not doing a French press. We're doing a pour over today. But it's going to be super awesome because Darren Robinson from the band Phantom Planet is coming to do some pour overs with us. It's going to be really, really fun. Uh, Phantom Planet is a terrific band out of L.A. Uh, they're an institution um, prior to Albrecht's, I was I was heavy into music, so we'd see them around. And of course, Amy and I went to tons of shows uh, with with them over the years, and just love their records. and uh, And they're great guys, and so we're really happy to have Darren come in and make some coffee with us. Um, so why don't we why don't we bring him in? Let's 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 do this. There he is. <laughs> hey, Darren. Thanks How for joining you, us today. Good to see you. What's that? And let me Thanks turn this for joining us. There. No problem. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right. So this is going to be really fun. Um, we are going to make a pour over. We're going to do basically pour over 101. So people who are joining, you guys can follow along as well uh, if you have your own pour over. And uh, you can learn how we do it at Albrecht's. All right, so um, let's get to it. I, I have to start with some bad puns, though, Darren. You know, uh -uh. There, there's no there's no <laughs> Sunday without bad puns. Are you ready to espresso yourself? <laughs> oh my God, I am. Yes, yes. It's already 10 a.m. and I've had a latte of coffee. I was just going to use that one. You beat me to it. Now I have nothing. Thanks, man. I gotta go. Uh, hey, look, hey, you know, I haven't <laughs> seen you in a while, but you look brutiful, you know? Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, I know, that's, that's low-hanging fruit. Wow. Us, but, but, you know, all right, we're, it's going to be magnificent, it, I okay? I promise it's going to be magnificent. You're going to love this thing. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you have... A pour over tool? I most certainly do. All right. You also yep. have a Sir Albrecht's diner mug? Indeed, I do. <laughs> awesome. You also have a gooseneck? I do. Yes. Wow. Look Thank at you. that. That's the production value you can expect from Albrecht's. <laughs> you know? Look at that. We're doing wow. great so far. And Nobody's then we have on fire. Paper filters. I do have paper. Wait, wait, wait. I have many. Would you look at that. <laughs> look at us. Woo! Many of them ready to go. All right. So we started off good. Um, yeah. uh, so far, for my pour over classes that I've run, nobody has gotten hurt. So <laughs> I want to make sure no, you also do not burn your million dollar guitar playing fingers. Cannot promise it. <laughs> Cannot promise it. <laughs> I really can't. But okay. Well, it's on me. So I better not screw this up. That's, right. that's, that's what I'm saying. All right. All right. So pour over for me uh, is really for, uh, you know, like black coffee, no creamer, no sugar. This is really a great way to open up coffee and get all the essences, all the flavors out of, out of the coffee. Um, it kind of um, like a French press is really heavy body. The pour over opens up the spectrum of flavors. It's not necessarily better. It's just a different way of doing it. You know, espresso is super, super dense and rich and bold. And that's, that's uh, like the opposite spectrum for me. Gotcha. All right. So anyway, pour over. Here we go. Uh, All right. First, we're going to just get used to our pour over. So I'm just going to place the pour over tool on top of our mug. All right. That's pretty, pretty easy. I know you guys can't see this here. Maybe if I do this. At least you could see the top. Okay. And I'll, I'll just lean down so you could see my, <laughs> so you could see my mug. Awesome. Yeah. All right. And then uh, we're going to fill this with just uh, sink water. So regular room temperature water, just halfway okay. up. 
Halfway up. Okay, and then I know you, you were saying with these two, it's good to pour it just kind of up to this point, right? Yeah, this one is just or gonna practice. So this is whatever, you, you can just do it whatever. Okay. Um, and then, um, so the key is to not, not let the water go over the top as you're tilting. Right. Um, and then you wanna have just like a really fluid pour from the spout. Okay. So you're trying to get that, get that motion where it's, it's really fluid. Um, so you're just gonna go like that and then you're gonna make little circles and you're not aiming for the top of the wall. You're aiming more toward the center. Okay. I've seen people where they go high on the wall because they want to clear the coffee, but you're actually going to aim in the center to get it brewing. I was going to say, I assume by doing that, it also stays hotter as a result because I know I, it, can get, it can get cold. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to do a couple of things to make sure that our coffee doesn't get cold too. Okay. So uh, are you pretty comfortable with that pour? You're not going to spill it over the top. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I was going to go like this, but I, I won't do that anymore. I'll, I'll, I'll use a spout, go in the center, go in All right. those circles. Yep. I think I got that. Okay, great. So then we're going to empty out our, our, our mug. All right. Okay. So that's our, our practice pour. All and right. just a heads up, uh, in case you haven't started your kettle yet, uh, start your kettle. Um, it started. We're, okay, we're good. Sure. And then, um, let's see, uh, I just want to say that we are going to be using some Sir Albert's coffee. You have a little, little baggie like this. We're going to start with the Charmer. The Charmer. All right. I yeah. do have that bad boy right here. Awesome. And I'm so a little bit about this ground size. Um, this is a kind of a medium or medium fine. So if, if, you're, uh, if you have your grinder at home and it's like one to 10, this is about a six. You could even go a five. And since you're eyeballing it, you can even go to four. So it's, it's really a medium. Kind of just depends on what you like. Uh, as, you, as you experience more coffees, you might get more specific about what you want to do. This is ground at a six, um, just so you know. Um, and, uh, and that's kind of like where, where we like it. Um, and then for today, we're going to be using a 17 to 1 coffee ratio. So what does that mean? That means 17 parts water, one part coffee. Okay. Um, and then later on, you know, as, as uh, you know, you move along and you, you, you try and taste all these different coffees, um, you, can always, you can always change the ratio. So like if you want more boldness, more body, then you would just add less water. Um, and then if you wanted to, to open up and re reach more fruity notes, higher notes, um, you could go up to 17 to 1. We're going to do 17 to 1 for both. Okay. Um, and so we have 14 grams of coffee in each, ba in each uh, bag. And then we're going to get about 238 grams of water using this guy. Mm -hmm. And I just ballpark it. I kind of weighed it out. So that's why I know it's right below that notch. Like right. maybe, maybe half an inch below that notch is about 238 grams of water. Okay, um, perfect. Normally, you would use a scale uh, and then actually weigh it, um, but it's okay. We'll, we'll, just, we'll just get close. You All know? right. All right, so uh, let's, let's insert a filter here. All right. And you already empty out your mug, right? Yeah, the mug is empty, totally empty. Okay, great. So Clean. we're going to start with Sir Albrecht's Charmer. Ignore the mm -hmm. flavor notes. All right. Oh, wait, actually, I'm sorry. We're, yeah. Before we do that, mm -hmm. we're going to fill this with hot water. Okay. Like halfway up. Just halfway, halfway up. up. Okay. This is the part I'm a little nervous about. I'm nervous have, about that part too. There's no tea kettle <laughs> here. I just have like, here, I'll show you if you can see it. This big, huge thing of uh, hot water. So let me pour it really quick. Give me one sec. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. Here we go. All right. All right. So about <laughs> halfway up. Boom. So I am, as you said, one more time, if you can see it, I'm like just, like you said, about a quarter of an inch below the notch. Okay. All right. All right. So we have the, the paper filter in. Yep. And then we have, uh, what we're going to do is, we're, this is called the, um, we're just going to rinse the filter. Okay. And um, this one, you can go high on the walls. Um, and what we're doing is we're trying to remove any paper residue and any woodsy taste from the filter. And 
it's going to lock in the filter and warm up the brewer and the mug. So it's doing Love a it. bunch of things all at once. So I'm just going to pour, make sure I don't talk, I don't hit the top. And we just want to saturate the whole filter, get it nice and wet. We're trying to warm up the, the pour over tool and the mug. All right. So once that drips all the way through, let me know. It looks like it is, it's done. All right, so I'm just gonna take this off and I'm gonna swirl this around and heat up the mug some more. Okay. And then I'm gonna just dump out the hot water. And now we're ready. We're ready awesome. to rock. I gotta say that's one step I never would have considered doing, so. I've already learned something. All right. Well, um, we did a comparison between unbleached and bleached filters. Yeah. Um, because there's there's some, you know, there's some people saying that bleaching the paper is bad for the environment. Um, right. And I was I wasn't convinced for a long time that you could remove all that woodsy taste from an unbleached filter. Mm -hmm. But we did test it, and you can if you rinse it, it actually will not affect the taste of your coffee. I sent you bleached just because I had it on hand. <laughs> right, but that's you, fine. You can use unbleached with the same method. It will remove the, the paper taste. So cool. if you're uh, heavy into conservation, that is definitely new. Gotcha. All right, so now we're ready to go uh, and we're gonna open up our charmer. All right. So just try to get all that coffee in there. Oh my God, it smells so good. So we're doing the entire bag, yeah? The entire bag, yeah, okay. everything. Just to be sure. Get everything in there. Ah, oh, it smells so good. Yeah, so if you take a whiff, you can definitely smell, to me, it smells really bright and fruity. Definitely. All right. Mm. And then, okay. so now we're gonna refill this thing up to the two thirds spot. Okay. Okay, so before we start, mm -hmm. there's two, we're gonna do two different types of pours. One of them is called the bloom pour, and the second one is called the brew pour. Okay. So the bloom pour, all we're doing, it's a short pour. All we're trying to do is saturate all the grounds in the pour over tool. We're just trying to open up the coffee, degas it, and prepare it for brewing. So we're trying to just get twice the amount of coffee uh, twice the amount of coffee that we have in there. So we're trying to get 28 grams of water in there, but mm -hmm. we can just eyeball it and make sure we're just saturating all the grounds. So it's okay. a short pour. You just want to make sure all the grounds are wet. We're making coffee. Almost there. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, great. So you'll see it bubble a little bit. It'll even rise. And that's just the coffee preparing to be brewed. Okay. All right, so we're going to wait a, approximately 15 seconds, which is now. And then we're going to okay. finish the rest of this, of this tool. Okay. All the way through. It, should, it shouldn't get to the top, so we're just going to make concentric circles, aiming for the center, not the walls. Being careful not to tip over the water from the top. <laughs> yeah, something that I probably would do, by the way. So I'm being extra careful right now. Are we pouring all the water that's left? All the water, yeah. All the water. All right. And it should it should probably get close to the top, and then and then it'll be done there. All right. Whoop. Okay, yeah, I just did. It went over the top. <laughs> that's my fault. Amateur right here. All right. That nice. is all of it. All right. So so is the water still on boil? Just make sure that, because we're going to do two cups. Oh, yeah. The water here is still very, very hot. Okay, great. It is boiling, actually, yes. Okay, perfect. All right. So uh, we're, this will probably take a couple minutes, um, but we're just going to get all that 238 grams of water in there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we can smell it as it's going through. So this is an Ethiopian coffee. Oh, oh my God. It smells so good. 
I can't I can't wait Whew. for you to show this off to the rest of the guys. I'm I'm excited. <laughs> I've already I've told a couple of them about I mean this is one blend that you gave me, uh the golden hour. Yeah. Which is probably my favorite one because of the uh like their sense of chocolate and caramel and yeah. black tea, which I'm a big fan of. But awesome. uh yeah, I, okay. I will get them into it for sure. Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be a crazy great uh way to make coffee every day. Um, and then just just a heads up, the the size filter that we're using is a two. Um, so in case you wanted to repurchase more filters, um, they're they're just sizes. So just heads up. Gotcha. All right, is yours looking like the grounds are dry? It is getting very close. It's okay. dry like around the edges, okay. and then in the we center, can... center it's still going just a little bit. All it's right, just we about can done. do a little check if we just like peek under. <laughs> Let's you have can a look. See if it's still dripping. Barely dripping. Okay, cool. So that's pretty close. Um, you could just remove this guy. All right. All together. It's pretty pretty easy. Just cinch it up like that. Yep. Yep. And then just yep, shake it out. Shake that bad boy out. Okay. All right. And then we're actually gonna put this off to the side for a second. Okay. So we're not gonna now, drink it right away. We're am gonna... I allowed to? Am I allowed to taste it really quick? Or no, you. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm dying to. So. Hold of on course. Oh my! It's so good. It's so good. That's awesome. I said I'm gonna take a little bit, but I'm like having half the cup. Uh, <laughs> here. All right. I'll put it to the All side. All right. So uh, we're gonna rinse out our filter real quick. So. All right. Our pour over. So just, just in case you guys are joining us now, we're doing a pour over one-on-one -on -one, uh, with Darren. And uh, we're going to be making two coffees. We're making, we just finished an Ethiopian coffee. Uh, and now we're going to make a uh, Sumatran coffee. Um, so we're going to do the same steps again. Um, okay. So we have this rinse and then we have a fresh mug, right? Do you want me to use my, my second mug? Yeah, second okay. mug. So fresh this mug. is my, my, my favorite mug that I got in Japan. So Awesome. Just showing you. All right. Put that back. Second mug. And then pour over tool. Yep. And then new filter. New filter. And then we're gonna fill up our water thing again. This is this is we're gonna lock in the filter again and, and, keep, and rinse it. Okay. So we just need a half or something like that. Sounds good. All right, and then we're gonna do the same thing. Uh, we're going to start at the top and then just rinse the filter. We remove all the paper taste out of right. there. And then we're also heating up the pour over vessel and the mug while we're doing this. Yeah. And it's gonna lock in our paper filter as well. Love it. All right, so once it's passed through, we're gonna just swirly swirl again. Okay, whoops. And then dump. Okay. All right, now we're ready. So now we're gonna fill this up to two thirds as we did before. Two thirds. Okay, and then we're gonna open the hangover chaser, which is our Sumatran coffee. All right. And Gotta have a quick, quick smell check, really quick. Yeah, of course. Ah, I want to just eat it. Oh, it, smells, <laughs> it. It smells so good. So the whole, the whole bag goes in, right? The whole bag. Just, so that, that's sure. about fifteen grams. Okay. Yeah, I know, Jeremy. He's very, very dangerous. <laughs> I don't have a kettle. I'm doing this in a very uh, amateurish way. What can I say? Didn't burn right. myself though. All right. So this one, when you smell it. <laughs> You'll no you'll notice it's like very very dark and herbally. There's some herbly notes to it. Yep. And then uh, so we're gonna do. Don't forget the bloom pour. So this is twice the amount of coffee that's in there. So we're okay. just trying to saturate all the grounds. All the grounds. Okay. And open them up, and you'll see the the coffee degas. It'll bubble, and it'll even it'll even like muffin top a little. 
<laughs> and how, how, how much am I pouring of the uh, of this guy in there? Just just enough to cover the the coffee. Cover of coffee. Okay. Yeah, just enough to saturate all the grounds and open them up. Got it. All right. All right. One time, Amy was telling me I put on. This is when skinny jeans were really in. Mm -hmm. And I tried on some jeans at, at, a, at a store. I was like, what do you think? And she's like, well, I like muffins. <laughs> <laughs> I was spilling over the side. And wow. she's, like, she's like, yeah, uh, they're a little tight. <laughs> <laughs> not, not kind. All right. So now we're going to finish the rest of this kettle. <laughs> All right. And don't spill over the top as usual. Uh, gotcha. Just nice concentric circles making aiming for the center. Got it. And then we're putting the rest of the water that's in the, it, right? Yeah, the entire thing. So we're doing a, a 17 to 1 ratio today, 238 grams to 14 grams of, of coffee. All right. I'm going a little slower this time because I don't want it to come out over the top. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm trying to learn. Great. Yeah, you're to learn from my past. Listen. Just a steady stream is great. So it, it looks good. Yeah. Almost done. There we go. Terrific. All right. So at this point, um, the reason why I had you kind of wait is because the human, the, what we've noticed is like the human body, the human anatomy, um, it, it registers flavors better at a, at a lower temperature, not boiling. So mm -hmm. you should be able to discern the flavors in the coffee mm. better as it gets closer to your body temperature. Interesting. Did not know that. <clears throat> also, I, I'm very used to pouring, you know, creamer, and I use stevia a lot. Okay. So it's it's interesting to drink it just straight as it is, you know. Sure. Um, and it's very tasty. Awesome. Mm. I'm still drinking the other one, but that's great. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this guy's still going. Still going. So yeah. On our original one, this is our first Ethiopian. Like, what yep. kind of what kind of flavors do you notice uh, in in the coffee? It's not a test. <laughs> um, it's hard to say. I mean, let me let me taste it one more time. Okay, sure. It's hard to say, but I definitely get like a little bit of like a chocolatey sense in there. Great. Um, especially how it smells. Yeah, so there should be, um, to me, it's, it, there's some lemon, lemon citrus. Definitely citrus. 100%. So there will be like uh, a very bright fruit, a br very bright fruit thing. Uh, that's yeah. why Amy called it the charmer, because it's very, it's a very charming coffee to, to us uh, with all the, all the fruit notes. Definitely. Great for like a, a Sunday morning, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's a Maroon 5 song. No, that is it. I was going to say. I was going to say. All right. So so the hangover chaser should be about done. So let's take yep. out that filter. Looking good. Put this off to the side. All right. So it'll be a little bit warm, but we can kind of taste the, the different flavor notes here. Should I let it sit for a second? Or yeah, I... you can let it sit. Yeah, sure. Try it in a minute. Yeah. How was your Sunday going there, Lily? It's going great. Um, Amy just walked in, so I will have Amy come in and say hi, and then we'll talk Phantom Planet. If you'd like. I hi, know. Darren. Well, look who it is. Hey, how are you? <laughs> good to have you on. <laughs> how are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm very well. I'm drinking right now. I am actually drinking two cups of your coffee at the same <laughs> time. Um, with, I have two mouths. There's one back here. So. <laughs> Both are very good, by the way. Yeah, that's really good. So second cup. What I'm like think? shaking already from, from all the caffeine. What do you Great. think about this, uh, this second cup? This one is, what I'm getting right now is a little bit more of a sweeter taste. Like on the, I sound like I'm a, I'm a, a an expert here and I'm definitely not but it no, looks good yeah it feels a little sweeter like on the tip of my tongue um and has kind of like a I'm kind of looking here to see if I'm if I'm right but it has kind of like a 
sort of a berry taste to it, like hints of citrus maybe. Hard to tell, but it's it tastes great. It's a lot different than the other one too. Yeah, so we think of this one as more like earth, earth, mm. earthy. Yeah, um, it's like herbly sense. and spicy. Um, it's it's definitely on the darker side uh, of the spectrum for us as a roaster, sure. um, but we love it. It's called the Hangover Chaser, and and people think it's a funny name, but we we think it's really really great great coffee too. It it's is. Not just it's, a funny name. it's very good. Definitely enjoying it. So all right. So uh, French press Sunday. Let's let's talk about Phantom Planet because I. Devastator has been one of my favorite records of the past year, and we play it at the shop all the time. Awesome. Thank you so much. So uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, Devastator re was released June of 2020. I don't know if it's recency bias or anything, but it's, it's really freaking solid, man. <laughs> we, we love it. Appreciate and, that, man. Thank and you. like, I don't know if this is, I don't know if you guys are conscious of this, but as like, as, as a fan, I think Devastator is like this natural evolution of like all the past records. Like, so like Phantom Planet is missing is like, you guys are kids and you're just learning how, like what the voice is and what you're trying to do. And then Guest is like big pop songs, choruses, and, and, uh, and just like, you guys are really finding it. And then you became Phantom Planet, uh, K-Rock Darlings with Bad Business and like this indie rock, like dope, uh, really stylish uh, a band and then and then Raise the Dead comes out and you guys have this really uh, complex songwriting and then Devastator is just, just like it's hard to explain but like you know we aged with you guys so it's just this natural like level of maturity that you guys have hit with Devastator like yeah. do, are you do you guys are you conscious of that are you trying to do that or are you is it just something that's coming naturally we we are very conscious of it um you know we we never have wanted to make the same record twice so um your description by the way was amazing like going from is missing to the guest to phantom planet all of it was very much you know when we're in the studio uh like you said when we did is missing that was very much like what are we doing we've never done this before you know sure. we were so new and so young uh, getting to the guests, you know, we had Mitchell Froom and Chad Blake who were producing the record, who are um, kind of like they're legendary producers. Um, so that was a bit more uh, focused and uh, maybe polished. Um, and then, yeah, you know, just as we've gone, we've always wanted to just explore different styles of music and uh, as a band, as a unit, really get all of our interests and combine everything and, you know, uh see where we were at the time um but yeah devastator is definitely you kind of get elements of all of our records on there um definitely. part of it part of it is is without a doubt a throwback to the guest in terms of alex's songwriting um but then you know the way that we recorded this record um was a lot different than we've done other records um when i say that i just mean for other records, we would normally do like pre-production where, um, you know, you sit with the producer and you go over the songs over and over again. You make sure all your parts are where they need to be. You know, uh, we'll hear what Alex is singing and maybe, you know, tell him, hey, you could hit, hit a high note here or you can have a run here. Like we really dissected everything. Um, but Devastator wasn't like that. Devastator was, you know, due to COVID and everything. Um, although it actually, it's not even COVID that, that affected the making of the record. Um, it was part of it was our drummer moving to, uh, to the other side of, uh, of the USA. So um, we went in without really knowing what, how it was going to turn out or what we were going to do. We weren't rehearsed with the songs. So a lot of it was us being in the studio and just kind of figuring out what our parts were there. Um, like literally I would sit with Alex. I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to put down a guitar part now, but <laughs> we had no idea what it was. So, and it, it just kind of flowed naturally. Um, in truth, it, it's actually my favorite Phantom Planet, favorite Phantom Planet record that we've made. Um, just awesome. the, la the lack of thought that went into it. Um, the lack of pre-production that went into it uh, kind of made it more exciting and more yeah. fun in the studio for I sure. Agree. 
All right. So uh, if 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 you we could go through kind of the the highlights to me because I, I I've listened to this heavily. Yeah, ask away. So only one and Bali and Bali song. They both have this really synth drum sound. Is that is that samples or is that Jeff actually playing drums? It's it's a combination. Um, Alex likes to uh, when he writes music, he will often put sort of like MIDI drums or sample drums just to kind of get a vibe, right. sort of get the bones and structure of the song. Um, and oftentimes when he does that, at least we think that it sounds so good that we'll have Jeff play on top of that. Okay. So it's all kind of a mixed in sound, you know? Um, I think that's part of what gives it its, its sound because you're getting these like possible drum loops or samples, but then you have real playing on top. Sure. And the mixture of it kind of gives it a bit of texture, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then, so, okay. And then that is definitely a new texture you're playing with. And then for Leave a Little Light On, there's this mm -hmm. insane Brian Wilson, Beach Boys, stacked harmony thing that comes yeah. in out of nowhere. And that, that like, so I'm a huge, I'm a huge, like, Pet Sounds dude. So when I, I heard that, too. I was like, holy crap, this is like, we're, we're getting to some fun, fun stuff now, you know? Definitely. I, I remember being in the studio when that was all going on, and uh, I think we all went out for lunch, and Alex stayed there, and we come back, and he had done all of it in like 30 <laughs> minutes. Like, I have no idea how, how he did that. Yeah. Um, but he just, you know, he, he, nothing was there. We came back and it was just fully, he had this whole thing. We're like, oh my God, what have you done? Yeah, that's unreal. So, yeah, that's, that's so cool. One of my favorite, rec one of my favorite moments on the record is, is exactly what you just mentioned. Yeah, that, that is unbelievable. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, so moving down the track list, uh, these are just the ones that I, I have questions on. So yeah, please. Time Moves On, to me, is like classic Phantom Planet, huge chorus, the guest type of thing. 100%. Like, that thing is stuck in my head, and it's this earworm, and it's just, time moves on. It's just like, oh my God, over and over. And then you guys made this video, and it's like uh, this psychedelic thing that Al Alex is standing in front of, and so it's oh, that's also stuck in my head. That 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 is a great, great song. Well, it's so some of the videos we did are totally different. Like uh, the one you're referring to is for only one, right? The video. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, sorry. Sort of a psychedelic thing going on, and then he actually did just because of COVID, we couldn't get together and yeah. make proper videos, so Alex quickly learned uh, iMovie. I, I think that's what he's using. <laughs> And just like, he's like, oh yeah, green screen. And he just figured it out and boom, made videos. And we're like, all right, you know, those are cool. But for Time Moves On, yeah, we had our friend, uh, Max Winkler. Uh, he reached out to us. He's like, listen, I, I've listened to this song. I really like it. I would love to do a video for you guys. And uh, his idea was, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but the Time Moves On video. So it's just a, a, a shot of Alex and he's playing and very slowly the camera is kind of panning in. So by the end, it's a close up of his face. It's actually, I can't remember the name of the song, uh, but it's a Bruce Springsteen, uh, it's, it's a, um, sort of like a hats off to a Bruce Springsteen uh, video that he did where he's playing the guitar and it's kind of panning in. So Amazing. I don't want to say we copied him, but we, it was definitely <laughs> heavily, <laughs> heavily inspired. We're, we're big fans of Bruce Springsteen. Um, well, there's that so. saying, right? Good artists borrow, great artists steal. <laughs> I mean, it's Bruce Springsteen, so you know he's he's legendary. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, so uh, the next one that is really like just mind blowing to me is "Dear Dead End." Um, that song mm. is really like to me the epitome of like how how the songwriting has evolved like that that the just the changes the changes that y you guys wrote for that one it just fits so perfectly along along the melody and then uh as it develops it's just this really really classic like when i think of like a classic song that will live on absolutely dude, yeah. dear dead end is, is gotta be at the top of your of your you know uh discography for sure I, I I think so too. Um, 
you know, again, Alex, I'm not trying to take credit here. I, if that's Alex's songwriting. I think that is, you know, I've known Alex for 28 years at this point. So I've heard every song he's written. I've heard tons of demos. And lyrically and musically, that song, Dear Dead End, to me, is at the very top of his songwriting. Um, he has a way of making music and chords match what he's saying, the emotion that he is feeling. Yeah. And, and he does it in a way that, you know, there's a lot of great songwriters out there, but he does it in a way, to me at least, where I'm like almost in tears when I hear it because it's just so like, how did you come up with these chords? You're, you're he just nails it. He gets it perfectly. Totally. I, I think that's, uh, there's something to be said for that. I think. Yeah, really yeah, yeah. So that, that to me was, was like as we're talking about evolution of a band that 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 to me was like wow this is significantly different than anything you guys have done and not that you had you guys have done great songs in the past too that, that's not to say that it's just like this other this other level of growth that i, I i'm i'm really excited about and it and yeah. as amy and i get older it's like it doesn't sometimes you know like there's bands that when they have proved what they wanted to prove, they go really like, I'm just going to make an art record and I don't give a shit about melody anymore. And I don't give a, sh you know, I'm just going to like throw this at the wall and then, and they don't care about the listener or, or whatever, you know? Mm. And I don't think that that's the way to do it. I think it's like, no, you should be even stronger as a songwriter. You should be even stronger from a melody perspective, you know? And, and so like, that's so rad to see it as it, as it, as it grows, you know? I'm, I'm glad you like it so much. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think there's something to be said for sort of the more art rock, noise rock kind of things. Um, there's a couple bands in the past that we used to listen to, uh, like one is Lightning Bolt. I don't know if you're familiar with that band. No, I don't. They're a, a two piece, like just the noisiest music you've ever heard in your life. But if you really listen to what's going on, it's it's genius. So there's something to be said for that. But, uh, you know, I think as we've matured um, and due to some things that we've gone through, you know, hard times that we've gone through, I feel like it's it's hit a place where the the innocence is gone. And I think that's kind of what Dear Dead End is touching on. You know, if you really listen to the lyrics, um, you're kind of getting this raw emotion that is uh hard to fake you know yeah so yeah and, and the 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 end section of waiting for the lights that last coda oh, is is unreal and i'm like oh my god that's that's so cool it's just this repetitive you know lyric and it just yeah. like it just takes you down that that road of everything that he's he was trying to say in the beat through the, throughout the song and then it's just like Absolutely. repetition really cool we uh, i might have mentioned it so we had a podcast um had we still have a podcast but we need to make we need to make some new uh episodes but uh pretty sure i talked about it in one of those i can't remember but um I remember listening back, going to Alex's house, and we were listening to a rough cut of the record. It wasn't fully mixed, wasn't mastered, um, but we listened to Dear, or not Dear Dead End, uh, Waiting for the Lights to Change. And by the time that part came in, the end part, I looked at Alex and I just started bawling. Like I just, I finally felt, you know, I, I knew what he was going through when he wrote the song, but it like really hit me at that time. And I just, I lost it. And wow. he started crying. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but it, <laughs> but really, you know, like when music can do that to you, it's, it's sure. you know, it's it's an amazing thing. So um, I feel you. I feel you on that. I, I you know, I uh, I'm proud of it. I'm proud to have been part of that. Yeah. That whole thing. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So Amy and I have been uh, I've watched you guys literally like from very early on uh, with Jacques and Jason Schwartzman. Oh yeah. And uh, we saw you guys at South Coast Plaza. You did some weird, like in the parking lot show. <laughs> it was crazy. I think I remember that. Yeah. I think I remember that, yeah. And then through the years, uh, you know, you guys, we I bumped into you around town in LA, Amy and I both, and you guys have always just been so great. Uh, and, and of course, blowing us away at all the shows are you guys gonna go on tour for devastator or are you gonna work on a new ep what, what do you guys have planned 
Great question. Um, there is a lot of new music that is being written right now. Oh, cool. Um, Alex is writing constantly, like no matter what, he's just, he's like a machine, um, uh, an emotional machine, I should say. Uh, everybody in the band writes though. Sam is, he produces and writes for a bunch of different people. Um, I write, I have a lot of stuff. I have a project called Dead Honcho with my friend Sal. Um, you know, it's not a project that we've ever toured or anything, but we just write music and produce it just for the fun of it. And we release it for free. Um, and Jeff, I know Jeff writes a lot of music too at his place. So um, what was your initial question though? I already lost track. What, what, is the, what is the next step? Are we gonna see a Devastator tour or are we gonna see a new record? Thank you. We, we uh, eventually you will see a new record or at least a lot of new music coming out. I'm not sure how we're gonna format that. Sure. Um, but we do have a lot of touring coming up uh, later this year. I don't want to say any shows just because until they're 100 percent confirmed. Um, but we do have shows coming up. We have some touring uh, coming up next year. We're supposed to play with uh, the format. Oh, I cool. guess they're, do they're doing a reunion as well. Awesome. Um, I've never met Nate, the lead singer, but apparently I have some mutual friends of his. And apparently he's just like the nicest, most talented just most gracious dude ever. And uh, so I'm excited to play with them and to meet him. Um, and then we have another show. Again, I can't say where uh, or, or when, but another pretty big show happening, I believe in February of next year. So that will be, a lot of it will be Devastator. Um, but as some of our fans might know, we have, uh, it's our 20 year reunion of The Guest. No way. We, we did it in 2002. It was released in 2002. So, um, you know, we have some some plans with that. That's all I'm going to say. I can't I can't give too much information yet, um, but it's going to be really fun. That's really cool. Uh, yeah. Do you, guys, do you stay in touch with with Jacques and, and Jason? Um, I don't I don't talk to them personally that that often. But uh, Jason Jason's super busy. He has kids and a wife, and he's doing his own thing. But uh, we do contact him. We are in touch with him. Oh, cool. Um, he's doing pretty well from what I know. Uh, Jacques, I know, is um, he's been doing art, he's been doing music, um, and he seems to be doing really well. Awesome. Like he, he's, a, he's a really talented, smart dude, and uh, it's interesting to see the different avenues he's taken. So, That's great. Uh, yeah. So any, any projects that, uh, that you are working on that you would, you would like to tell people about? Uh, I guess I can, I can mention it here. It hasn't started yet. Um, but it's going to, I need to get a brand new computer. Um, <laughs> I, I have, so I bought an iPad, which is what I'm using right now. And I was hoping, I'm like, hey, I'm going to record music on here. Not as easy. Um, Cause you have to use GarageBand, you can't use Logic. Um, so uh, I will get a new computer. And once I do, I have a new side project. Oh, cool. Um, I don't know if I want to release the name of it just <laughs> yet, but. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to, you don't have to. It's subject to change, but. Um, it's got a pretty funny name, um, cool. funny slash cool name. And uh, most likely when I start writing more music for it, I'll probably just release it for free and uh, awesome. kind of put it on SoundCloud or whatever and get awesome. it out there. Yeah. And I appreciate all the, all the tutorials you're giving. Uh, I, like to, I like to play along and, and check out what you guys, how you guys write stuff. It's really, really fun. Awesome. Yeah, you play guitar, right? I do, yeah. yeah. So I've, I've been in bands prior to Albrex. That was like, like my focus is uh, was trying to um, write records and be playing bands. So awesome, man! I gotta ask you, what kind of guitar do you have? Or guitars, plural? <laughs> I so uh, for this I'm obsessed, last, for so. this most recent project, I play a, a White Falcon, um, and the band is East of Angels. It's like this um, folk punk band. Um, awesome, man. And then, but you're you're gonna. <laughs> this is crazy but my buddy tricked me like literally last weekend he's like hey come hang out and i haven't seen him in a while uh he's like come and hang out and uh we'll, we'll get a beer and we'll catch up i walk into his house and like his family's there and there's like family friends and they're not huh. they're not ready to like hang, hang out with me so i'm like w what's going on he takes me to his kid's room and he has two guitars laid out for me and he's like you're taking these home and so Whoa. I was like, I, I can't take this from you, man. This is way too generous. You should sell this stuff. And he's like, I don't want to sell it. I want it to be loved. And so he like, 
he didn't want to hang out with me at all, actually. It was really kind of, I was a little <laughs> offended. <laughs> he didn't want to hang out with me at all. He put them in the cases. He walked me down the stairs, put them on the porch. And he's like, wow. you're taking them. And he basically showed me up. And one of them is a 1967 Fender Coronado. And then the other one is a oh. 1968 Vox um, Teardrop. It's no like, way. Yeah. Are you it, serious? It was unreal. I was like, what are we doing? Why are you oh doing this? Oh, my God. You know, a couple of years back, uh, like 2009, 2010, I was in a, uh, a surf band. Uh, oh, cool. Uh, very briefly called The Californian with this guy. Uh, his name is John Graney. He's a songwriter. He was the singer. And uh, I got really obsessed with like Tysco, if, if you're familiar yeah, yeah, with yeah. that. Yeah. Sort of the old brand surf guitars. Um, and one of the styles that I was really into was the teardrop style guitars, which are modeled after the Vox that you mentioned. Sure. So to me, you kind of have like a holy grail of this certain genre. That's so awesome, man. Like, was, that's wow. Yeah, it's unreal. And I, I did Very cool. I, I, it was just such a weird thing. Like I, I didn't want to take it too. like, I'm not like that, that dude that's like, like really want, I don't know. I, I'm not asking anybody for anything, you know, like, that's, right. not, that's not my style. And, and, and so it was just so generous and unreal. And, oh, my God, I can't stop playing that Coronado. I, that's so cool. I've never had a vintage Oof. guitar. And, like, I can't believe how different it is. It's really, like, the nitro cellulose paint is, feels so much different than, like, a, a new guitar. Totally. Like there's not that plasticky, you, you know what I'm talking about. I know what you mean, yeah. There's like a laminate material or something that they use that just doesn't feel quite the right. Yeah, right. You, can't, you can't feel the wood. It's, it's really weird. And I yeah. didn't think it would make that big of a difference, you know? And, and like, I just can't stop playing that thing. It's like, it's unreal. There's, you know, there's also two, I'm not associated with these brands in any way, shape or form. Um, so I'm not, it's not like I'm being paid to talk about it, but there's two brands that, that I really, really like these days. Um, one of which is Nash Guitars. Oh, cool. Um, my friend Todd Weisenbaker, I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's played with a bunch of different acts, really great guitar player, good dude. He, uh, I was talking to him in 2013 or 14, telling him I really wanted to get a Strat. And he's like, don't get a Fender, get a Nash. He's like, thank me later. I'm like, okay. Went to a guitar shop, played one. It was one of the best sounding feeling guitars i've ever felt feel they feel like uh like vintage guitars they're just made and designed like that and uh since then i think i'm on my fourth one now no way uh, a stratocaster yeah uh, That's awesome. a nash strat that i bought one of the my favorite guitars i've ever played um and then there's another brand too again not associated with them but uh i don't have one of the guitars yet but it's called a water slide guitar i've never um, heard of this there's this guy out here in LA named Patrick who uh, makes them and they are just phenomenal guitars. Um, the pickups he uses and the feel and all that stuff is just out of control. So is it modeled I've, after, I've yet to go. Is it modeled after one of the, the bigger, more well-known guitars? Yeah, I mean, so he, he does, he has bodies that are sort of like Stratocaster bodies or Telecaster, okay, sure. uh, Jazzmaster, all the different shapes. But, you know, he completely customizes them. The pickups he uses are like reminiscent of old 50s and 60s style uh, pickups. Um, they look just insane. They're, it's just That's such so a cool, cool. guitar. Yeah. I don't really want to get one, but um, I have yet to, to make that happen. Do you have a, a collection that you only do like for the studio and then, and then like touring guitars? Sort of, yeah. Um, I mean, I've gone through a lot of guitars. I've had probably 70 or 80 guitars oh my in my God. life. But I have four left. Uh, or three? Oh, my God. One, two. I have three or four left. I don't remember how many it is. Um, but, uh, yeah, for touring, I, I will use my Nash, the guitar that I have now. Uh, and then for home, I now still have the uh, a Gibson Gold Top 56 reissue. It's what I used to use, like, back in the guest those sure. days. Yeah. Um, and then I have a Gibson ES335. Um, they're not vintage. They're, they're reissues, but they're really great guitars. Yeah, I love that ES335. Um, totally. So those, awesome. those are more like studio guitars for me now. Um, but definitely that, those Nashes I love to take on tour. They're, just, they're perfect. They're yeah. perfectly made. So, and yeah. then what, what amps are you, are you using now? 
Straight up, like if I'm playing a live show, um, typically I'll use a, a Fender Blues Junior. Um, that's definitely my go-to. Um, over the past year, I also bought a Roland, what is it called? Jazz 40, I think it's called, okay. JC40. Okay. Um, they're a bit cleaner sounding, so it's, it's really a specific, uh, a specific sound. I'm not sure it's right for live shows for me. Um, but man, practicing with them, the sounds you can get is, they're amazing. That's really awesome. great amp. Yeah. It's awesome. So what about you? I'm curious. What, what amps do you use? Um, well, back when, <laughs> back when my band was doing well, uh, in a different band, um, I had to deal with Matchless. So I, I still have mm. Matchless. Um, great amps. Yeah, great amp. And then I have a, a 76 Twin Reaver. So those are... Okay, those are cool. I'll... I'll trade you my Blues Junior for <laughs> straight up. I'll just trade you. That, that one is so cool because uh, it was this this kid had it. Um, I, it was a Craigslist deal, um, nice. and uh, and there was something weird about like when I plugged it in, it didn't it didn't work right, and so he gave me a crazy deal on it because I wasn't sure like what the problem was, and it ended up being not a <laughs> not a problem. Oh, man. So I've had it for like 10, 10 15 years now, and and uh, and that thing's never gonna go away. That's staying. That's insane. amazing. <laughs> yeah, they're great, great amps. Yeah, you can't go wrong. Built to built to last for sure. So, That's awesome. uh, do you have any questions about pour over or coffee um, before we let you get, let you go here? Honestly, you, you kind of have already answered my questions just going through the process. Awesome. Um, admittedly, when you, so you guys sent me a little care package. Yep. And I was so thrilled to get it. I, I wasn't expecting it. So I tried uh, doing a pour over for myself to see if I could nail it. And I didn't do the, the pre-pour okay. to get the filter set. It really does make a big difference. Like it tastes totally different. Uh, the coffee stays warmer. Uh, I mean, I'm still drinking it and it's still pretty nice. hot. So, um, and I'll probably have both cups, <laughs> by the way. I still have this this other one. I'm like, they're both just sitting right here. Um, but yeah, I don't have any other questions. You you honestly, you got everything that I was going to ask. Amazing. It was Thanks. very thorough. Thanks so much for, for joining us. Uh, do you have anything you want else you want to plug? Uh, I'm happy to do that here. Honestly, not, not really. Just, uh, you know, if you're a fan of Phantom Planet, I hope to see you guys at some future shows. And uh, if not, then... I don't know, maybe give us a second chance and um, yeah, that's it. I'm not, I'm not here to sell anything or cool. whatever. I just, no I'm worries. Here to drink coffee. Thanks, and, uh, thanks for, some ass. for answering all my questions. Uh, I know that was super nerdy and in, in, in depth there. <laughs> but, no, it was great. Uh, but I'm really, really happy to talk to you. Thank, thanks for the time too. We appreciate you. Of Thank course, you. anytime. Thank you, Amy. I appreciate you guys. We appreciate you guys too. So. All right, um, we'll see you at the next show. Sounds good. Sounds okay, good. bye, Darren. Take bye. care, you guys. Have Take a good care. Sunday. All right. French Fest Sunday with Darren Robinson from Phantom Planet. What a treat. 